what's going on let's uh let's talk about precision planting and auto path precision planting planter company out there they make aftermarket row unit components um, and have some pretty nice stuff out there for guys who want to retrofit their own planters john deere auto path john deere auto path is the technology where we document where every individual row is at where the planter actually ran through the field so that we can come back for a future pass and tell the sprayer or the combine or nutrient applicator where they should drive based off of where the planting rows are at. Um, the technology is used so that we are the most efficient we can possibly can be and so that we can take advantage of running where the planter once ran um, if everything matches up um, for, for your length of width. Now, works great when we're deer on deer crime. John Deere tractor, John Deere planting equipment, the data seamlessly moves over. The problem is, is when we start working with precision planting, we can still make this happen. Um, it's going to require a implement receiver on the planter still, and uh, an ISO bus connection to the back of the tractor. And realistically, it doesn't have to be just a John Deere bar. We can do this on a John Deere bar, a Kinsey bar, Casey International bar, as long as we're hooked into a John Deere Gen 4, Gen 5 display, we can record lines for AutoPath. The trick is when we bring planting data in, mother deer or the deer system has to be able to see where that planter ran. And what happens is when you bring in planting 2020 data into Operation Center, which is a good thing, uh, Precision Planting just came out with an API that allows their cloud system to link with Operation Center so we can wirelessly send that data from the precision monitors direct to operation center. Great thing to have out there, not, not not wanting that, let's put it that way. But the precision planting monitor does not record where the individual rows are because it's not linked into that secondary GPS unit that would typically be behind the tractor on the bar. So we have to set up the monitor in a special way in order to document where those rows uh, are whether or again whether or not it's on a deer bar kinsey bar john deer bar doesn't care we can create a profile on the display in order to map that for us and then when we bring it back into operations center we're going to have two layers of planting data one from the precision planting one from the coverage map that the gen 4 or gen 5 monitor is going to create uh, it's just going to look like blanket coverage but hidden in that blanket coverage is the actual row unit passes and where they were at for autopath so what we're going to go over is we're going to go up how to set that up on a Gen 4 or a Gen 5, and then on the back side, once we get that data into Op Center, how do we get that to the rest of our equipment? All right, first things for first, whenever we have a planter that isn't run through John Deere ISO bus, so with a Precision 2020 monitor, we still have to set up the implement itself. So you can see here I've got a 6R, I have no implement on board, so I need to go ahead and add that implement in. So get my good hand here so we're going to set a new profile i'm going to call this a kinsey 3600 planter so do i have a rate controller attached in this case i do not i'm just going to be running implement guidance off of this bar so no air cart lateral offset and center of rotation so i am not offset at all from the center i'm going to be running perfectly normal uh, down the center, so I'm gonna leave that at zero. Uh, center of rotation, this is gonna be wherever our running wheels or our ground wheels, whatever you wanna call it, the rubber tires that transport the unit when it's lifted up or not lifted up. I wanna make sure that that is my center of rotation, so I'm gonna call that 12 feet. And I'm gonna always get out and verify this with a tape measure when I have the implement hooked on. I don't have a rear connection in this point, so I'm going to continue. I need to add an operation. So for here, I want to select planting seeds per acre. So I'm planting, working width. I'm going to switch this from feet to rows. I'm going to designate how many rows I have. So I'm a 12 row planter at this case at 30 inch spacing. Does the math for us. Work point. Work point is going to be wherever the seed is actually dropping out of the seed tube. So wherever that seed is leaving the implement, dropping into the ground, 
that's where I want that. So I'm gonna take my measure measuring tape out and go from wherever my connection point is, whether that be off the drawbar or the two point hitch back to wherever the work is occurring. So I'm gonna call this 12 foot, six inches. And then there's work recording. So now this is where things can uh, really be set up the way that you like it. The most responsive way is if we have a, an implement switch on the back, so like a, a finger switch. So as that planter lowers down, the bar touches that switch and then we know when we're in the ground or when we're not in the ground. If we don't have an implement switch, we can use an SCV. The only thing you have to watch out for is if your SCV is timed, it, the work recording will not start until that timing cycle is done. So for example, if you set it to five seconds and it takes five seconds for that planter to drop down into the ground, we will not start recording our documentation on the 4600 or the Gen 5 Therefore, we will not be marking down where our individual rows are at until that time is done. So, things to pay attention to when we're doing that. Connection type. If we're off the drawbar, we'll select drawbar. If you're off the, th the three-point, you're going to select that rear three-point. And then, implement receiver mount. So, we have to tell the display where that receiver is located at. So, is it offset to the left or the right, or is it dead center in the bar? We have to tell it that with this GPS lateral offset. So if it's center, we hit center, it's gonna be at zero. If we have it offset to the left, we need to make sure to have that measurement in there. On my planter, I've got it dead in the center. And again, it, I verified this by taking the tape left to right. I didn't just put it in the middle and say good enough, because I always need to verify what that measurement is. GPS inline offset, so wherever we're connecting, our connection point is to the center of that dome. I have to tell it where that is at. In this case, if I take my tape measure out there and measure it, I'm going to be at 12 feet. And then my GPS receiver, I have to tell it what serial number receiver is on the implement. So when you have two receivers hooked into a display, your implement receiver will not be will be in this box. So you have to select the serial number of it and that serial number receiver will show up here. So really important to note, anytime we change receivers on the planter, we have to make sure that this information is updated and correct. Otherwise it will recognize that the serial number does not match and that we need to redo this information or get the correct serial number receiver on this toolbar. Once that's all good, I'm going to hit save. So here we got the bar, right hand side. I do need to tell it that I'm planting corn. I should have a variety of some sort in there. So even if you're not going to use this for your main data, you're going to pull your main good data in from the 2020 monitor. I still want to put some sort of variety in here just so that I am documenting something. If you don't want to put default in there, you can always put auto path as your variety. So I'm planting for auto path and then rate should have some sort of blanket rate in there for seeds that I'm planting. Now, if you're not sure if you have this set up correctly for auto path, there is another trick that you can do on new software. So under your work setup, there's a little arrow with a dot. If you go into that guy, this is the advanced settings. And then we should always check on enable auto path recording status. So what this does is on our main screen, now you can see here the orange button means not ready to record. If it's green, that means we are ready to record. So if something is awry and you don't know what the problem is, if we push this button, it's gonna tell us exactly what the problem is. So in this case, my implement receiver has to be set up in the profile because I'm missing that serial number from that receiver. I'm not ready to record. I also have to have an implement receiver hooked up, which I do not right now because I'm out in the yard. And I have to have that accuracy of SF3 or SFRTK, mobile RTK, or radio RTK in order to make this work. Now, this will share signal with the leader or the tractor. So as long as my tractor is on RTK or SF3, then I should be able to just be able to put an SF1 receiver on the implement and they'll pair that signal together and we're off to the races. But if this guy's not green, don't don't roll because otherwise your auto path line is not going to be recording. So you're not going to get any data. So the last piece in here, verify implement receiver for aft and height. This is going to be dictated on our Starfire 
receiver main page. So you actually, if you click this button, when there is a receiver on the machine, it will take you to your Starfire implement receiver page. And from in there, you have to set up your fore and aft measurement, which is from your work point, excuse me, from your pivot point. So those rubber wheels, the transport wheel measurement that we were talking about to the center of the receiver, have to have that measurement in there accurately. And I also have to have my GPS height in the working position. So the measurements for our fore and aft for our height, really any receiver measurements should be taken with the planter in the ground in the working position. If you take the measurements out of the ground, it's not gonna work correctly. So always make sure we're in that working position when we do this. Once that is set up, all we have to do is put our client farm field in there and we're ready to go. So the only other thing that I wanna call out is our, we talked about it earlier. So if we have a timer on our SCV, the recording will not start in this case until after five seconds after I detent the switch. So I'm gonna detent it. It's gonna to count to five seconds. Once the five seconds is up, then my recording starts. Same as when I'm picking the planter up at the end of the field. It'll shut it off as soon as we start raising, but until your timer is completely run out, it will not start recording. So always make sure that that timer is set to the absolute bare minimum of time that it takes to get the planter from the top down into the ground. Otherwise you're not gonna record appropriately. And don't forget, if we're on a 4640 or a G5 Universal, you won't have SCVs for triggers. If you're running a Universal display, our recording source is going to eat, is going to have to be off an implement switch at that point. There's really no way around that. So once we get all the data back into Operations Center from our MTG with our auto path lines and our wireless cloud transfer data or the trusty USB stick from either of those monitors, we're gonna bring that info back into Op Center, but there are a couple of things we wanna look at before we send the data off. First thing being in our account settings button. So that's gonna be over here on the gear on the right hand side. You're gonna to wanna to go in there if you are running a third party, either a precision planting monitor or if you're using a Raven for like a nutrient application or Pro 700 anything like that. If we are automatically sending data or bringing data into Op Center, we want to go over to agronomic performance. We want to go all the way to the bottom and check this area. If we have multiple groups of data coming in at the same time, for example, John Deere blanket coverage data with AutoPath for planting and planting data coming from 2020, this is automatically set as show data from a single display brand only. So with John Deere being the primary source. So if it sees John Deere in 2020 data planted the exact same date, exact same time, it's going to hide the 2020 data until we come down here and turn on show data from all display brands do not filter. The idea is that they're trying to keep multiple planter passes for the same day out and trying to clean up op center. But if you have a third party source, it's not John Deere, it's gonna hide that if it sees both of these at the exact same time. So make sure that this is turned on, otherwise you may not see all of your planting data either from precision planting or from those third parties. Now, once we get the data in here, there's two ways to send it to another machine. The first method that we're gonna try to use is we're gonna go to plan and we're gonna go to work planner. So this is the new way of sending information after we've completed like a planting pass or even a strip till pass to send to any of our equipment. So we're gonna create an application plan or a harvest plan, depending on what you're doing. In this case, I'm gonna plan an application pass. There's two ways you can select fields. You can either click on fields if they have boundaries and they will highlight. Otherwise, if they don't, you can always click on the list, use the list to filter out your client farm field on the left-hand side. Once you have your fields selected, in this case, I've got three fields selected on my list. If I hit next, what it's gonna do is it gives us the opportunity to select a product in a mix. You don't necessarily have to do this 
to send the auto path. And then here you'll see auto path available two out of three fields. So then it's going to automatically pull auto path from the largest seeding source operation completed within the last 12 months. And that is what it's going to send to the sprayer display when we do send these work plans. The second method to sending auto path lines is by going into setup file creator and creating a setup file to send your auto path lines. What we pay attention for in this piece is when we go to select our auto path source operations from our LAN tab, we make sure to select the correct seeding pass. So you can see in this example, we've got two different seeding passes. One has a red exclamation point signifying that there is no auto path data tied to this planting file. Therefore, I want to select the lower of those planter files, the one that doesn't have the red exclamation point. This is going to be the one file that I use for this particular field for my auto path lines when I send it to another machine. This method does work, but you have to make sure to go through each individual field in order to get the correct auto path guidance line sent to the display and that we're not selecting that precision 2020 data by mistake. All in all, a little lengthy video, so I do apologize for that, but appreciate you hanging in. That's how we make AutoPath work when we have systems like precision planting in the mix. So hope that you found this information useful. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on the next one.